And meanwhile, the president of Ukraine is sounding the alarm over a potential disaster at the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. In a video addressed last night, President Zelensky claimed that Russian troops have placed objects resembling explosives on the roof of the Zaporizhia power plant. The plant has been a source of anxiety in the region since Russia captured it in March of last year. And since then, both Ukraine and Russia have accused each other of trying to attack it. And we're seeing that play out right now. The Kremlin pushing back on the latest claim, saying the plant is at risk of sabotage by Ukraine. The International Atomic Energy Agency says inspectors haven't found evidence of explosives, but they also don't have access to the full site. So should we be concerned? Let's welcome retired Army Major Mike Lyons. Major, thank you so much for joining us. So both sides accusing each other of plotting an attack on the nuclear power plant. Is this a disinformation campaign? Or do you think Russia is mounting a false flag operation here? Hi, Kelly, thanks for having me. Uh, it, it looks more like the false flag operation. There's no way it's in Ukraine's interest to do anything to destroy uh, that plant. Uh, it's actually not functioning. It's all offline. The six reactors are not operating. Uh, it's being run on auxiliary power. There's nuclear material there. It's in no one's interest to see it destroyed or, or, or for, for many different reasons because of the potential leak of, of nuclear material, as well as uh, when the war is over, it's going to be used to power Ukraine and, and other places like inside of Russia. So um, we, we're watching it very closely. Nothing happened today. Today was the, the day that actually it was, it was officially put offline. Uh, but it does, it's looking more and more, and more like uh, it's something the Russians are, are doing it as part of their playbook I'm a, from a false flag perspective, uh, trying to blame the Ukrainians. But again, there's just no real reason that the Ukrainians would have any interest in, in destroying or, or blowing up this plan or doing something that would cause it harm. Yeah, you could certainly understand that. So, Major, wouldn't an attack on the plant backfire on Putin since the world would rally against him? Yeah, I, I think so. It, it depends what the attack is. There's reports of explosives that were on the, the top of some of the reactors there. There, there could be superficial damage, let's say, to the to the plant that uh, that could be used as as propaganda. There, it just sits on the wrong side of the river. It sits on the side of the Dnieper River that the Russians control, and they've had um, Ukrainian citizens running it. But but now the Russians have now run all those off. So Russia has complete responsibility for it at this point. So should something happen to it, Russia will be blamed. Now, I don't believe there's any response that, that NATO or anybody else can do because of it. It'll just be another collateral damage of the war that's taking place right now. So turning to a different topic, if we can, the mercenary leader who led an armed rebellion in Moscow was reportedly back in Russia today to collect his arsenal of guns. What does that say to you about the situation in the Kremlin right now? Still a lot of confusion. I've just never felt that, uh, that Vladimir Putin is giving up on the Wagner group. He's got too much invested in them for what they do in Africa, training troops there, rare earth minerals in some of those countries that have them. He's invested all in with what uh, their results have been. So it doesn't surprise me that Prigozhin is still out there. Uh, he was vanquished initially to Belarus, but they're not going away. Now, these are not elite soldiers. We're not talking about Green Berets or any of that, but but they have capacity. They've been funded in the past, and and they're just too much of a an, an asset for Vladimir Putin right now to give up on on what they're doing. I think they'll be repositioned someplace. Uh, they won't be necessarily impactful in Ukraine, but they're a long term mercenary army for Vladimir Putin. That given what's happening in Russia right now too, with among the internal fighting, Vladimir Putin's going to need loyalists on his side. I still think it's going to be the Wagner Group. What do you see as the immediate next steps for that group, for the Wagner group? Well, the first thing they have to do is the, 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 the rank and file have to get them happy. You know, they always had better rations. They were fed. Uh, they had better equipment. They, they had things that the regular army units didn't have. So they're going to get isolated pretty quickly and, and reassured that they're not going to join the Russian troops on the front lines. I, I, and and a lot, that can't happen anywhere near Ukraine or in Russia, for example, where they are in Rostov on Dom. So I think they move. I think potentially they regroup in Belarus and then they get there and potentially also uh, create challenges for Poland and our NATO countries and alliances there because um, that they now pose a threat to to what's happening there. Th this is the classic little green men 
that caused the problems initially back in 2014 and 2013 inside of Crimea. Um, they could go to the Baltic states. There's lots of different things that this group has the potential of doing. Uh, but I think right now they're going to separate them from the Russian military, get them rearmed, re refit, and, and re ready to go. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.